Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The case of the bouncing boiler water level. Hoping to avoid a lawsuit, the boiler manufacturer hired me to troubleshoot a steam boiler in a nursing home. The boiler tripped on the low water cutoff several times a day. Most of the time, it tripped on the primary low water cutoff, which is an automatic reset control and sometimes it tripped on the auxiliary low water cutoff, which is a manual reset control. As a result, the building couldn't heat. The building owner, installer, and designer blamed the boiler for the problem. At the job site, I met with the maintenance director and the installer. I heard all about how bad this boiler was, and they never had an issue with the old boiler. The old boiler was a large cast iron sectional atmospheric boiler, it had a large round draft verger on top, which looked like a UFO landed on the boiler. I started the boiler and looked at the water in the gauge glass to see if there was oil on top of the water or solids floating in the water. Oil or elevated solids could cause bouncing water levels in the steam boiler. The oil was typically from the pipe threading done when installing the boiler. This is why the manufacturer suggests cleaning steam boilers after installation. There were no oil or solids on the water. The water level rose and fell, and the power burner shut off after a few minutes. The burner restarted, and I bent over to look inside the combustion chamber of the boiler through the side glass. When the flame came on, it went all the way to the rear of the boiler and curled around the back of the boiler. It's over firing, I thought and connected my manometer to the pressure trap downstream of the gas pressure regulator. The gas pressure reading was within an inch or two of the rated pressure. Rubbing my chin, I looked at the boiler piping and flue. After inserting the probe from my combustion analyzer into the flue pipe, I saw the stack temperature was high, about 100 degrees higher than normal. I inserted my draft gauge probe into the flue. It read 0 0.5 inches water column. Then it hit me. The suggested draft reading for this boiler should be 0 0.05 inches water column. The draft was 10 times higher than what the manufacturer recommended. Looking at the barometric damper, I saw the issue. Why didn't I see it before, I wondered. The contractor installed a reducer in the T and used a smaller barometric damper. The damper was wide open and too small. A barometric damper is used for just this purpose. It is set for the proper boiler draft, and if the draft is higher than the setting, it will open and allow boiler room air into the chimney. This keeps the flame stable and lowers the heat lost up the chimney. I told the owner and installer what I thought to be the problem, and the installer scoffed. I explained that a barometric damper should be the same size as the flue pipe. The installer and I removed the barometric damper and reducer and started the boiler. The flames were still being pulled into the boiler, so I checked the gas pressure. The gas pressure was too high now that we adjusted the draft, so I adjusted the gas pressure to the proper setting and the boiler water level settled down. I checked the draft pressure and it was 0 0.05 inches water column. Perfect. We watched the boiler for the next hour and it didn't fail. The installer went to the wholesale house and picked up a new barometric damper sized for the flue pipe. The lawyers were called off for now and the boiler heated all winter. The lesson I learned that day is to look at the entire system when troubleshooting. In this case, the gas pressure was set at the correct pressure, but the draft was too high. It was pulling flue gases through the boiler too quickly. If you would like to contact me, I have my contact information below. This includes my cell and the two websites 
that I publish. This is all the books I've written so far. I have 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon.com. I write articles for several trade publications, and they are online as well. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.